My talk is going to be about sponge switch and then rechargeable batteries from sustainable resources. And of course, uh, the motivation is coming from the climate change and how we can reduce the carbon dioxide emission and as engineers, what we can do in the lab. And this is something that is, I think everybody is familiar in this uh, room, you know, showing the atmospheric carbon dioxide emission going up uh, yearly, and that impacts also the seawater concentration, because about 25% of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is being absorbed by oceans, so that's why the concentration of carbon dioxide inside the oceans also going up. So what happens if the carbon dioxide concentration goes up inside the ocean simply is uh, you are making the oceans more acidic. So that's the fact that we are living today and we are making our oceans more acidic. And if you look at the numbers here, actually, this shows the, since the beginning of the industrial era, and the ocean has absorbed about 525 billion tons of carbon dioxide. And, and today it's about like 22 million tons per day. So that's a lot. So this, cur this curve is gonna continue going up and then unfortunately this curve is gonna continue going up and this one is gonna start, uh, continue going down. So when you make you know, uh, the chemistry change in the oceans, uh, simply it affects the marine life. I just wanna give a quick example from our uh, you know, blood and uh, the human blood, you know, it's around like 7.3, 7.4 in pH. And if we have 0.2 to 0.3, you know, difference and drop in our pH, so we'll go into a coma and we'll die. So similar things will be happening in the, the marine life uh, as well, which we need to pay attention and then, uh, you know, do something about it for sure. And that's one of the stresses, you know, global warming, heating the, uh, the surface temperature of the ocean and making acidic is one stress and additional stresses are the oil spills. And many of us in our lifetime, we have seen, you know, a couple of oil spills and then we also see that how it impacts. So simply we know the impact on the, uh, the birds and then the marine life and they are all being impacted. And uh, so we start looking into what we can do, how we can clean this uh, mess from the ocean. And that's how we come up with this uh, sponge material. And it took about four years for us to develop this material. And what you are seeing is that after an oil spill, majority of the oil stays on the surface of the ocean. And so we just wanna see uh, you know, if we have a super inexpensive, a cheap material that we can clear and you know, take all the oil out of the ocean. So that's what is happening here. What you see on the left in blue color, it was the oil. And this is the sponge material. We turned that into a, like a flake format in this case and trying to clean the oil on the surface of the ocean. So as you can see, we were able to take all the oil spill from the surface. But not the only, you know, the oil spills just remain on the surface. Some of them actually goes under, under the water. And that's why we have to find a way of cleaning this oil spills or oil contaminants inside the, uh, inside the depth of the ocean too. So that's why we wanna make sure that our material works in the depth of the ocean as well. And so that's what we have tested here. So this particular oil contaminant is being cleaned using our sponge material also while it is uh, at the bottom of the beaker. So I think myself and many of us said, if there is an oil spill, what can I do, right? Many of my friends are keep saying this. And so that's why we start kind of like asking a question to ourselves, you know, as a person, what can we do if there is an oil spill? So to personalize this uh, technology, so we have developed the spine suit and uh, simply create a variable technology that helps while you are swimming, you are also cleaning the ocean. <laughs> so that's the main idea. And uh, believe it or not, you know, we entered this uh, you know, wearable technology competition in Rome. 
and there were about 70 applicants and coming from 25 different countries and we, we got the first place. So people <laughs> paying attention to this, uh, so it was taken quite well. And the, the technology simply was you know, using a 3D printing and along with using our uh, sponge material, which is a kind of like acting filler, and just making a sponge suit. And of course, we have versions for uh, men also. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the question everybody asks, so I am just answering before <laughs> anybody asks. <laughs> And so this is, you know, what we are trying to do and to save the oceans. But of course, you know, by living in California, what we pay attention is that this carbon dioxide emission is really uh, uh, needs to be addressed. And then the main contributor here is the transportation. So for that reason, we kind of like uh, want to, you know, take the, uh, the cars that are running on the fossil fuels and uh, if, if we can feed like electrical vehicles instead. So that's why you really need to have a good battery technology and that's what we are trying to work on for 10, more than 10 years and develop a good battery technologies that can enable and take these you know, oil-based cars away from the, uh, from the streets and we can use maybe EVs instead. So just want to show you, you know, a couple of the technologies we have developed in our group. And one of them is called silicon nanofiber. And this technology aimed to, you know, reduce the cost. Of course, the cost is always important. So by removing some of the unwanted materials in the battery system, so we were able to save the cost by 7%. And the weight is important, for example, especially, you know, unmanned vehicles, if you are trying to fly or even, you know, in the cars, you always would like to have lightweight batteries instead of carrying the, uh, the, the batteries, you want to carry the people. So that's why the weight is important. So we were able to, with this technology, reduce that weight also about 6%. And, and then this uh, technology has been uh, chosen as a top 100. Uh, received the top 100 seal by Nature Publisher. And uh, our performance compared to Tesla's graphite anode is about two times better. And another technology we developed is the mono nano silicon for the anode. And then the performance was about like four times better than Tesla's graphite. And many people, uh, especially industry, are asking, you know, can you make something that we can charge this you know, you don't want to wait like eight hours to charge your Tesla, but rather than that, can we charge this in 10 minutes? And while you are doing that, you are not damaging the battery, you are not killing your uh, car, and you just want to make sure that you have a very, very stable chemistry. So that's what we have worked on and developed the silicon uh, cone CNT battery system uh, with a great performance as well. And of course, Considering the uh, sustainability, we always wanted to look into other sources that we can use for the batteries, and especially, uh, you know, sustainable resources. And that's what uh, we start working on, the portable uh, mushroom battery. It also received top 100 seal from the Nature Publisher, and we were able to, you know, replace the graphite with the, the material we produce from the portobello mushrooms. And believe it or not, this was in the Conan O'Brien show, and Conan believes that we came up with the idea while we are using a different type of mushroom, so I just want to answer this to make it public. No, we didn't. <laughs> So we just looked at the microarchitecture of the uh, basically uh, mushrooms, and that's why we decided to use that, which is a great template for us. And other resources that we have used, the nanosilicon from the beach. As you can see, this is the true beach sand. And after processing, we were able to you know, make batteries with the three times better performance as well. And another recent work, we use diatoms, which are, uh, you know, biosilicon, and convert them into also a usable format for our batteries, and about like three times better performance too. And 
since recyclability is, was one of my actions on campus and uh, my project was try to use recyclable you know, material to make batteries out of it. And uh, since more than 28 billion glass bottles and jars end up in the landfills every year, and that's equivalent of filling of two Empire State buildings every three weeks. So that's, that's a lot of material. And we were successfully actually take this uh, recycled bottle and process that and make a battery with four times uh, performance as well. And uh, our group is quite innovative and we produce like literally uh, a patent almost every few months and all being licensed by different type of uh, companies. And this is one of the company who took our uh, patents and, and then make a, a battery, a real battery out of this. And it's a pouch uh, cell batteries, which 35% uh, better performance that you can use in your cell phones today. I think I need to finish, so I am not, I just gonna show just one thing. And as part of my climate action also, I work with all the sustainability uh, directors of each campus, 10 campuses. So collected the data from each campus and put it together to make a comparison. So I'm gonna just make it quick here. So this is just showing comparison. You can see, find yourselves here, uh, the Berkeley versus you know, how people are doing. And then I'll just kind of like show where the UCR is and then Landfill waste, so we also looked into the landfill waste. So who is doing great, who is doing bad? Okay, so I am finishing and then I just wanna say that, you know, this is the end and uh, this problem that we have, climate act, you know, basically uh, warming is a global uh, problem. So our atmospheres are connected, our oceans are connected, so we cannot ignore any kind of like you know, failure or, you know, disaster happening other side of the world because we are saying that we are too far. But, Sue, let's, let's work together and solve this problem. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>